Okay, good afternoon, everyone. The income stream community. I'm happy and excited to be here again. This is session 23 out of 27 sessions that we want to cover for Digit Code Virtual Empowerment Conference. I'm excited to be here today with uh with, uh, with our speaker in our midst. We have Shidin Wagu in our midst to, this afternoon, and he is going to be taking us on how to create content uh, software. Okay, that's it. What he is going to be walking us through in this section. Chidi, how are you doing? If you are set, we are ready. Yeah, uh, I'm good. Can you hear me perfectly? Yeah, I can hear you. How are you doing? I'm good. And you? I'm doing good too. Uh, thank you for joining us at DigiCode Virtual Empowerment Conference. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. And before we go into the section properly, let me quickly tell us whom Chidin Wagu is. Chidin Wagu is a serial tech entrepreneur, entrepreneur, ecosystem builder, and software developer. Chid is the co founder and CEO of Publisher, a digital publisher that helped over 6,000 underserved African creatives living in a low income and disadvantaged community to earn over 240,000. US dollar in re revenue and he has been described by Kobni as one of the largest digital publisher in Africa. So uh, uh, Chidi, uh, first before we go into the session properly, let, let, let's get to know what his publisher is all about. So uh, I believe the pronunciation is policy and uh, it's a, a digital content distribution platform. We work with um, independent uh, creatives, um, writers, musicians, filmmakers, video game developers, um, typically those in the digital media space. Uh, what we do is we help them to focus on the creating process. We help, you know, help them to focus on creating their digital content. And so we handle the business part of everything. We help them to transform their creativity into art for them. So yeah, that's what the company is all about. Okay, thank you. I know I know you have a story behind the company why you and your twins brother decided to have to 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 bet the company. So please before your session we would still like to know why did you why did you and your twins brother decided to bet the company? Yeah, um we started uh publicity after we experienced um changes in the creative industry ourselves. So I used to um I used to be a writer at my twin brother used to be in, uh, a musician. He's still a musician anyway. He's still actively in music. But I, I had to quit writing so I can focus on leading public here. So um, after uh, the acquisition of our second startup company, we went into the creative industry. I wrote uh, about three books and he did some studio albums. And when we tried to monetize it, we discovered so much challenges there. And my twin had to lose, you know, several thousands of dollars, you know, trying to monetize this content. And so um, we said to ourselves, we had to solve this problem for ourselves. And after we solved this problem for ourselves, we decided to come together and commercialize the product. And that was how we started public here, uh, a way to um, help other creatives solve the problem just the way we solved it for ourselves. Okay, awesome. Uh, we, I know... Uh... Uh, with the purpose of this conference that we want to use it to empower 5,000 people globally and that is our mission behind this conference we discover that people need solution not just information and we believe that we carry solution when it comes to creating software irrespective of software and I, we though the time is very short we might not be able to cover everything in this particular class right now but we believe that with the with, with what you are going to do we will know the, we will have the knowledge of how to go about it. So what I want to do, Chidi, is that I will stay behind the scene while I will allow you to do the business of the day. Okay, sir? I'm behind the scene here, Chidi. Okay. So, um, I believe this is a, a software development masterclass. Yes. So, um, people who are listening to this are obviously people who are trying to um, learn how to code, you know, learn software development. So, you know, before I talk, talk about how to get started, the question is how many people know how to code? So I was reading uh, a while back, 
and I realized that only 1% of the world's population know how to code. So that leaves 99% as people who don't know how to code and pe- you know, and including those who don't know how to code but also want to learn how to code. And uh, learning to code is just learning. It's the same thing as learning to read and write. So the way you read uh, an English text, you know, maybe reading a novel or something, you know, you're able to interpret words into, you know, um, meaning, you know, you're able to make sense out of the words you read. It's the same thing about, you know, same thing about learning to code. You're, you're able to read computer code. You're able to understand, you know, what an algorithm is and what every statement and expression is like. You're able to interpret it because obviously I can write a, sense, a series of, you know, a program. And then if I give the program to someone who understands that computer language, the person will have an idea of what I'm trying to create. And although, they, you know, these days they use comments, you know, within the program to understand what you're trying to do. But if you look at an algorithm, obviously, you know, if you understand the, the, the computer language, you would know, you know, what the, the person who wrote it was trying to achieve. And so it's the same thing, you know, you know, you should be able to read and write code. And code is the way we communicate with computers. Just the way I communicate, I'm communicating with you right now. You're understanding the words that come out of my mouth because you understand the English language. But if I'm speaking in maybe Igbo, or maybe I'm speaking in Alsa or Portuguese or French, obviously you'd hear what I'm saying, but you just it doesn't make any sense to you. The same thing with uh, when you're you know learning to code and you don't know how to code in a certain language, and maybe you're reading a code written in React. And uh, maybe you only you know how to code, uh, maybe in um, let's say PHP. And you're reading React. Obviously, you know this is a, is a it's a computer language, but you you're not familiar with it. You don't understand it. So um, when you're trying to learn how to code, the first question is you have to understand what a code is. So code is the way you interact with computers. We have high level and low level um, uh, programming languages. Um, we have you know several um, high level programming languages like COBOL. Fortran, those are really old computer languages, you know, and I think at, at, at every point, you know, they are all de- decrypted into um, binary, one, 101, 101, you know, but the idea is that um, obviously you're trying to learn some low level um, programming language, those that have to use, you know, day to day English. So maybe you can say things like, um, um, let's imagine if you're trying to code in HTML, you know, you see the body tag, you see the HTML tag, you see the head tag. These are all English language, you know. However, they have some kind of parentheses or some kind of strict rule, you know, structure that makes them peculiar. You know, you know, if you're trying to end uh, a CSS, um, you know, you have to use, you know, um, a, a, a comma or a semicolon you know, in some programming languages. Python, you know, you don't have to use any um, any of uh, you know comma or semicolon to be able to do that. I think that's one of that's one of the less strict um, program. It can do. Okay, so now you also have to learn what a computer program can do for you. You know, you need to know that, um, for example, you know, reading and learning to read and write can, you know, open a lot of doors for you. It can, in fact, it opens a lot of opportunities for you as a person, because if you can read and write, you can be able to do certain things. You, know? um, you cannot be able to go to school, you know, advance, you know, advance uh, your skill and stuff. So same thing with learning to code. When you learn to code, there's certain things you can build upon, you know. So learning to code can, you know, do a lot of things. It can help you to enhance your digital literacy. It can help you to cultivate skills. It can help you to expand your horizon and you know, stuff. Um, the most important thing that learning to code can help you do is can help you. It can help you to solve problems, you know, um, using technology and innovation. So yeah, um, that is one thing that uh, learning to code can do. And um, so after you've understood, you know, what coding can help you to do, the next thing you have to do is you have to pick your part. Now, there are several parts in learning to code. And people, you know, people say, oh, I want to learn how to code. And they think maybe it's just one simple thing or one, one single part. Learning to code has multiple parts, very, very 
long and you know they are multiple and they are very long that means that you have to constantly develop yourself you have to constantly learn you know you have to constantly uh things are changing you know the way you know in which you um you 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 set variables you know in um in javascript you know uh, has changed you know um things you know you know you know there are new things every day you know html we now have html5 we have css3 you know um the ways in, in which we uh we used to close uh image tags in html has changed now you know we no longer close image tags you know by having to put multiple tags you know we can just simply close it with uh, a forward slash you know so things are changing you know so and you need to ask the person when you choose you know you've chosen the part you want to learn you need to constantly develop yourself so i'll be you know i i compiled a list of um programming languages you can learn and what they can help you to do so for example if you want to create apps for ios you know for iphones for app, uh, apple tablets and stuff mm -hmm. uh you should learn swift uh, if you want to learn um, how to code um, app, Android apps, you know, you should uh, learn uh, Java. Java is really, um, it's one of the oldest languages I know of. And, um, um, but it's quite, uh, I, sometimes I always argue that, uh, I, that it's very difficult to learn Java because it's quite, uh, it's, I don't know, but personally, I feel it's a very difficult language. But some people, you know, tend to think differently. But I just think it's, you know, what I can achieve with React, you know, with just ten lines of code. I think Java might have me to write twenty or something. So yeah, but that's my own opinion anyway. If you want to learn how to create websites, um, you have to learn HTML, which is like a structure, like a skeleton of 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 you know of a website. Then you also have to learn CSS, which is like the the look and feel, which is like the skin. Uh, of a website, you know, it tells you how this, the website will look like. And uh, you also have to learn JavaScript. Um, Client-side JavaScript can work, you know, that's just the, the regular JavaScript. This does not include Angular, React, or, or Vue, you know, JS, you know, this is just the regular JavaScript. Uh, if you want to learn how to create 2D games, you need to um, learn um, languages like um, Python um, and JavaScript. Also, you can learn GML. So GML is not a very popular language, but I really love GML because I learned GML when I was, I think I was 15 when I learned GML. And um, it was really interesting because GML is more like an advanced form of basic. So I don't know if you know basic. Basic is, I think most people in, when you're studying computer science at the university, you get to learn basic. So GML is an advanced form of basic, uh, it has, um, expressions, variables, um, um, statements, you know, do until, do while, and uh, and those, you know, if else statements, you know. But it was, it's really, really amazing. And you can actually um, improve its functionalities by adding DL, which is uh, dynamic link libraries. So uh, it's um, it's one of my favorite languages. And um, although I don't, I no longer code video games, but you know, it. Uh, it's really cool. To a point, I think even GML can, you know, it, although it's, you know, it was created mostly for video games, you can use it to create a mobile application for your phone. And the good thing about it is that when you learn to code in GML, you know, using GameMaker, you can export it to both iOS and, you know, Windows. So you can use it to create multiple, you know, the same app or multiple environments. So it's really good. Uh, if you want to learn how to create Windows uh, desktop application, then you need to learn C Sharp. Uh, you need to also also learn C Sharp or C++ if you want to create 3D games. Same thing. Uh, if you enjoy, I think Jamer can also create uh, 3D games if you if you understand the concept of scaling and uh, uh, and depth. You know, so you can also create 3D games more like an illusion of 3D games. Uh, although, yeah, I think also Jamer uh, you can set. Um, the environment to 3D as well. So yeah, you can also use it to create 3D games. So many amazing games that 3D games have been created with GML. GML actually means um, game maker language and uh, it's one of my favorite languages I learned. Uh, if you want to also create robots, you know, all this uh, robotics and microcontrollers, you know, you need to learn C. Um, this is one language I never learned because I, I was never interested in um, robotics and uh, Andrina. Um, but if you also want to learn um, how to do some math and computing and data analysis, you should learn Python. 
Python is really good for data analysis. You can also learn Julia. You know, I recently uh, discovered um, Julia as well as a language. There's another one called Go. Go is actually a very interesting language. And I, I think, um, you know, you'd, uh, anybody, uh, I also recommend that. I have a friend in Kenya who's, who, who is really good at Go. Uh, then you also need to learn R or MATLAB, you know, if you're also trying to do some math and scientific computing as well. Yeah. Now, um, the next thing is that you need to uh, pick your course. So obviously you've decided the parts you want to hear, you know, you want to take, maybe you want to create 2D games, you want to create 3D games, you want to do data analysis, or maybe you want to, you want to create um, Windows um, desktop applications. You can also learn um, um, Electron. Electron is uh, more like uh, Java, uh, React, uh, JavaScript, but it's used to create um, uh, just uh, native apps, you know, you know for, for desktop. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, once you've learned, you've decided, you know, what you want to learn, then you need to pick your course. And, you know, it could be basic, it could be intermediate, it could be advanced courses courses, you know, that you used to learn, you know, to advance yourself. Uh, you can learn uh, data analysis, you know, using data camp. You can learn, um, uh, you can learn uh, virtually a lot of languages, XML and stuff, uh, using W3 schools. W3 schools is really an amazing uh, utility to learn um, how to code in several languages, Python, um, JavaScript, uh, like literally a lot of languages on um, W3 schools. Um, yeah. Also you can learn you know, on Udemy, you can learn on Coursera, you can learn on EDX, you can learn on Pluralsight, you can learn on Code Academy, um, even on Free Code Camp. There are a lot of utilities out there. Some of them are paid, some of them are for money, whichever the case is, um, uh, you can first start with the free courses. Uh, W3 schools is basically free. So I would advise you to go to that. Uh, Data Camp has some, yeah, some Python um, data science courses that are, free. and then you can unlock some, you know, maybe money. Then um, while you're learning code, one thing I find out that is very important, you need to have support system. So there are different ways in which you can have a support system. You can get a code buddy. So a code buddy is somebody that is learning to code just like you typically on the same level or very similar level with you. So that means that you guys have the same or similar expertise. Now the aim is that you guys will try to improve yourselves together. You know, you learn something new, you meet your code buddy and you share with your code buddy, your code buddy learns something new, which is up to you, you know, shares it with you. You guys can sit down together, collaborate on a project. You know, the idea is just to learn together, more like a um, study group, uh, exactly. So just create that kind of, platform where you guys can, um, you know, uh, create, um, you know, create magic together. Then you need to also get a, a mentor. A mentor is someone who's, who is, who is way advanced than you, maybe has up to 10 years of experience, have several years of experience building innovative apps, you know, or doing innovative things or projects, you know. Uh, so they are way ahead of you in the part you've chosen. And, um, you have to run to this expert or uh, this mentor to, you know, especially when you get stuck and you want advice, you know, you need a mentor to be able to mentor you, someone who can share advice with you, someone who can tell you uh, if there's any new update, you know, stuff like that, you know, that mentor is very important to you. It's more like your guide, you know, it's uh, someone that's helping you lead you through the path so that you do not make uh, so you, you just literally mix your your journey as a as a coder um, or a software developer basically less stressful then you need to um, also be part of forums development forums i for example i lost stack overflow stack overflow has helped me to solve a lot of problems a lot of i think every computer programmer every software developer at some point you stack overflow because there are so many amazing answers of stack, stack overflow, especially when you're going through a lot of problems. I remember when I was trying to, I remember, I, I can't remember exactly the problem I was trying to solve, but stick, stack overflow like came to my rescue, helped me, you know, find where I was had, making the, the, the mistake and everything went. I think also Reddit, um, you know, so setting forums in Reddit can also help you as well. And you need to ask good questions, you know, so don't do not, when you are using this, 
platforms like Stack Overflow to ask questions, you know, ask random questions, ask questions that really are really specific. And like, for example, you can say to them, oh, I'm trying to create an app or web application, but I want to restrict its usage to only users within West Africa. That means that I want people when they try to use this app beyond West Africa, maybe they're in Eastern Africa or they're in the United States or you know in Europe or you know Southeastern Asia. You know, I want whenever they go to this app, you know, um, in those with those in those locations, you know, it can detect their IP and redirect them to a place which tells that tells them that oh, we are not currently offering services to you to your con you know to your country where you want to you know we're going to be opening up to you guys later in the future and now you're trying to do that you know so that's more like geo-targeting and stuff and you know and maybe you, you're stuck on how to achieve that then yeah you can ask that kind of question oh i'm trying to do this i'm doing trying to do that can you help me do this and do that so it's more specific do not just come and ask them oh i'm trying to uh, learn a very great language and what do you think is the best language that can help me make money that's not a good it's not a good question you should have figured out that yourself and um you're just trying to solve a specific problem and you need the answers yeah after that, you should try and go beyond the basics, you know, so um, when you start coding, obviously you start with the basics, you know, uh, HTML, you start with the basics, CSS, you start with the basics, you know, try to um, know how to alter uh, classes and, um, and IDs and stuff. But then you need to go beyond that, you know, you need to learn how to use CSS to calculate, you know, you need to learn how to use CSS to, um, you know, to even animate. CSS can actually animate things. So you need to learn how to do all these things, you know, um, and uh, so you need to go beyond the basics. And the best way to ch is to challenge yourself, is to compete with, you know, other people, uh, collaborate with other people as well. And there are so many platforms that can, you can use to keep practicing. I collected a couple of, of platforms that you can use to keep practicing and push yourself. Some of them include uh, Code Abbey, Code Byte, Code Chef, Code Forces, Code Walls, Hacker Ed, and Hacker Rank. But there are a lot of them out there. Um, but these are the ones that I really know, and I, I use more often. Um, and yeah. So um, if there are any questions, uh, I'm open to answering those questions. But yeah, this is the basic things you need to um, um, you need to know when trying to learn to code. Um, remember, um, you need to know what um, what coding is all about what coding can do for you, what, you know, what part you, what you've chosen, you know, what you do want to create 2D games and stuff, you know, if you want to create iOS app, then you need to learn Swift, you want, if you want to create um, 2D games, you know, then you need to learn uh, GML and, you know, JavaScript and Python, you know, you need, you need to know the exact part you want to take, then after that, you pick your own courses, you know, to pick, you know, you need to pick your courses. There's so many platforms that, that you can, you know, they can do that. You need Coursera, EDX, Pluralsight, uh, Code Academy, uh, the Vichy Schools, uh, free, uh, free Code Camp, Data Camp, blah blah blah. You need to get a support system, you know, get a code, uh, a code body, get a code mentor, you know. Then also, you know, ask forums. You know, you need to ask forums, um, platforms like Stack, Stack Overflow or, or Reddit. Then you need to go beyond the basics. You know, you need to try and learn more. You know, try and collaborate and push yourself and. There are so many platforms like that, including Code Abbey, Code by Code Chef, Code Process, Code Wars, Hacker Ed, and Hacker Rank. And I hope um, um, you know some someday in the future you're good at coding, and maybe you can use it to solve some of the worst um, most pressing problems. So I'm uh, open to questions in case you have any. Yeah, I like I like the way you wrap uh, wrap it all. That I we hope we hope one day. By the time you have learned it, you'll be able to come and solve one of the world's problems. I like that statement. Thank you so much, Shidi. Uh, actually, we are not having feedback from the uh, from the uh, audience, but I have few, I just have two questions to ask. Oh. Like, yeah. okay, uh, if someone wants to start the coding, what are the possible rule stumbling block that that someone might face on the way, and how can someone <laughs> overcome that? I discovered about coding is that uh, you need to know a lot about mathematics. You know, when I was coding, uh, I was learning coding GML. I realized that I had to know dy dx. You know, obviously I, I learned calculus when I was, you know, dy, I, DY dx. <laughs> yeah, I, I learned calculus when I was um, um, in uh, SS1. You know, for the mathematics or additional mathematics, whatever they call it. Uh, and then I realized that um, I was learning to code video games, you know, 3D games especially. I had to learn, uh, I, I had to do so many calculations. 
I needed to learn. I learned factor. I, I use factorials, you know, in learning how to understand the car physics. You know, when a car hits the wall, how does it react? How does it bounce in the back? How does the car decelerate when you press the X? You know, you know, how does the car accelerate and stuff? I found out that I had to do a lot of integration and differentiation and factorial and stuff. And I was like, wow. So this is where all these things, you know, come to play. So um, you. As a math, as um, a software developer, even a data analyst, you have to know a lot of mathematics. So if you're terrible or you hated mathematics in school and you're trying to do, uh, you're trying to be a software developer, I don't know how that is possible, but I'll, I'll, I'll just say you need to kind of embrace it. Even when you're even learning CSS, you know, uh, you need to learn, you know, and you're trying to use CSS to animate, you know. Um, you need to understand, you know, um, the seconds in which, you know, in which, you know, the delay rather, you know, seconds, you know, same thing with functions and stuff. So um, you need to learn, uh, you need to uh, embrace mathematics in case you uh, don't like mathematics. So many things that um, code, uh, when you're learning to code, you know, um, you need to, I won't say cram, but you need to practice a lot. So the more you practice over and over and over, then you realize that you get better and better. You know, it's just more like when you're reading and writing, you know, you, when you're communicating properly in a language that you're learning, you know, uh, for example, you're learning to speak French, you know, the best way to learn to speak French is when you're in a French community around people that constantly speak the language to you and you have to speak the language backwards, you know, back to them. Same thing with coding, you know, you need to constantly do it. The moment you quit, I remember the time I started coding in GML and, and, I, and I switched into learning, you know, into JavaScript and um, PHP because I was trying to learn, you know, focus on web applications and, and leave video games. I came back to uh, video games like about two years later and I wanted to, you know, start coding in Gemini and I realized that I had forgotten a couple of, uh, of functions and um, arguments I used to use over there. So I had to like do, do some crash course, you know, like I had to like crash, you know, do some crash self-education to be able to understand, you know, get them back, you know. So, you know, you, know, you need to constantly, ed, you know, practice. So if you're the kind of person that doesn't have a computer close to them or a computer at your disposal, then to learn to code or, you know, to learn software development might be almost impossible. It's just like, like learning to drive a car and you don't have a car. Uh, learning to drive a car, you need to have a, a car at your disposal to constantly practice and get better, you know, at driving. So it's the same thing. And so just, I would say just do it, you know, and keep doing it every day, keep learning every day, keep trying your hands on new things. Even if you don't have a software development job, you can just try your hands on something challenging. I remember in 2009, my and I used we just sit down and tell ourselves, we want to just, you know, we want to do something. So it's not like a work, and nobody's paying us, we just want to just test our coding skills and we just create some, we created a, a calculator that helps you solve differentiation and integration. You know, so we just wanted to just try how we can do it, and then the the the, cap, the the calculator, you know, the calculator shows you the workings, you know, how it was, the answers were derived, you know, and it was very exciting when we were able to do that because we were 19 and we just in, enjoyed, you know, doing this, you know. So these are the things you need to do constantly. You need to just learn and constantly practice, and whenever you hit the roadblock, um, don't just don't tell yourself you can't do it. Just keep doing it. Also, try and get someone that. Is also learning with you, you know, that gives you that incentive to keep doing it, especially if the person is doing it themselves. You know, you see the person keeping, you know, this life we 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 live in a competitive ecosystem. You know, when somebody's doing something and is really doing it very well, you, you don't want to be the person that doesn't know how to do it or isn't doing it well. So you push yourself, you know, to do it. So just put yourself around people that are smart and are also learning what you're learning. So that you're always there to push yourself, especially when you see them also doing amazing things, you know. Um, um, yeah, but also get someone who's well ahead of you, you know, like a mentor to just push you as well. But so whatever challenge you, you, you're going to experience, if you have a supportive ecosystem, if you have a good support system, you're definitely going to um, mitigate it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we are going to do is this. Uh, uh, Chidis, thank you so much for this section. But what I want to do, what I want us to do is this, that, okay, 
I want you to give the, your last advice because as you are coming, I'm very sure that some of your followers follow you down here. Okay, some of them want to learn this thing that you are talking about. I want you to give them, as we are having up, the, the best idea that you, you would like to give them. And then also tell them how they can reach out to you so in case they want to reach out to you. Then let them, let them also know how they can also make the use of Publisher to publish their content across the world. Thank you. Yeah, so um, my advice for any software developer would be do not create a tech company out of your, you know, your software development skill all because you know how to code. Um, try, you know, you know, find a very pressing problem to solve and, you know, create a company out of it. So, you know, don't create an app because you can create an app. Create an app that actually solves a problem that you've identified. You know, so many people here, I learned how to code. So I want to start a tech company now. You know, because I can cope now, you know, and obviously just they create something that people don't want. You know, don't be that person. And then if you want to find me on social media, it's very pretty simple. Just search my name, Chidi Wogu. I think I'm usually the first result, yeah. Or you can just Google Chidi Wogu and um, um, a Google Knowledge Graph will display then all my social media handles out there. My Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram, my LinkedIn, they're all there. Even YouTube, I think. Uh, so yeah, you know you can find me uh, if you just with a simple Google uh, Google search. And the Wogu, the A is it, there's an A in my son in my or in my last name. There's an A there, but uh, it's for a strange reason it's not being pronounced. So yeah, so just Chi and then Wa Wogu if I'm pronouncing it the way it's written. And. Um, What's the last question again? How uh, the creatives can use the publisher to publish their content across the world. Okay, yeah. That's a very pretty straightforward uh, process. You know, you can also Google Publish here. And when you Google Publish here, uh, you can read third party uh, reviews about the company. Um, so you can have an idea of what the company is all about, but from a neutral point of view, you know, from, without having to hear it from me. And then you can decide if you want to uh, distribute your content with us. However, you can visit our website, publisher.com. Uh, also, we also you can also find us at publisher.net, same website. And when you get there, you can check our FAQ page at publisher.net slash FAQs. And then you get so many answers to all your, you know, to any question you have, you know, including what we do, how we do it, why we are doing it, our plans for the future, blah blah blah. Everything, every I think every answer that's you basically have about the company is there, you know. Uh, then when you like com co totally convinced, convinced that we are the kind of pe people you want to work with, then you can just simply uh, click on register, or uh, you can visit, visit publisher.net slash register, then you create an account, and then you submit your content for distribution, and, you know, for review and distribution consideration. And when we decide to publish your content, uh, within two weeks, uh, we distribute your content to our 413 partner stores, and uh, we help you generate revenue. We help you to monitor your sales across this, you know, across our partner stores. Then we share the revenue we generate for you. We, we typically take 25% uh, of the revenue we generate for you. So our our services have no charge. We only make money when you make money. So usually, usually I think it's actually a good a good deal because yeah, we are more like betting on you. Yep. So yeah. So if you have a good content and your book is amazing or your music is amazing or you you have a short movie and it's amazing and you're looking for how to make money out of it yeah Thank you. that is good if you have movie uh, if you have maybe, maybe you are into comedy skits or you, you want to monetize your intellectual property like book audio mm -hmm. uh, audio content like podcast or uh, any other uh, 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 maybe do, can someone sell online course on your platform ah unfortunately no Mm -hmm. Oh, we only work with writers, musicians, filmmakers, and video game developers. Okay, so if you are, if your content is around what he has said, you can actually promote your content on their platform. So as he has said, he has dropped his contacts, uh, details, and so you can reach out to him. He's a good developer that you can use <laughs> for your project. And this is where we are going to end this section right now, uh, audience. On behalf of the Income Stream community, Chidi, we want to say a big thank you for joining us this afternoon to come and share your knowledge with us. We really appreciate your coming and we say thank you so much and we wish you all the best in your endeavor. Thank you and bye-bye. Okay. So the Income Stream community, we are ending the session right now. Join me at 2 p.m. 
at 4 p.m. as I will be taking us a section. That is, will be my section. I'm going to be taking us a section on how to create an online course. That is what I'm going to be taking us at 4 p.m. So join me. That is my session. At 4 p.m., I'll be here to take us a session on how to create an online course. And if you want, if you are yet to uh, uh, buy my book, How to Make Passive Income Online, go to theincomestream.com slash shop you will see it there get the book it's going to it's going to benefit you I mean, and we also have some products online too that you can also buy that are going to benefit you please take the, uh, go and buy uh, buy what we put over there some of them you need them you need them to grow okay thank you so much i look forward to see you at 4 p.m bye for now